webinars, why would you use them? Guys, I decided to fly to Bali to get the answer with this guy right here. Because everyone talks about webinars, they talk about why they're good, all this sort of stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through what a good webinar is, what the platforms are, and really dive deep into that. So we've just arrived, gotta go get our bags. Chris has gotta change out of his leggings. And then we're gonna cover that on, in the car on the way to dinner for you guys shortly. Guys, we're gonna be sharing all of the webinar tips, secrets, etc., with you soon, except you can probably hear it's pissing with rain right now. So once it dies down a little bit, I'm gonna bring on the man Chris Benetti and share with you all the platforms that we should be using but I wanna make sure it gets a little bit quieter. Guys, the rain has finally settled. So we've got the man, CB, Chris Benetti here. And we wanna talk about and understand, you know, not only why you would wanna use a webinar, but what are some of the platforms that are people are using today, right now, that are working really well. So Chris, so whilst everyone else is off to the beachfront, you and me are staying back here hustling, right? Let's share a little bit, like, what, like why do you think webinars are important like for what purpose and obviously I know the funnel division are the experts in webinar funnels tell us a little bit about that first off yeah so essentially what I sort of identified was that um, it's really good having heaps of different clients um, but if you're having different clients in all these different areas and there's a lot of different things happening and all of this stuff going on it's really hard to actually enable you to focus and really excel in one area so what I did um, at, at the start of um, the financial year was actually decided to niche down into just webinar funnels. Now, it's not like I had never done webinar funnels before, that's the complete opposite. I actually helped create two, two Fumble Club webinar funnels by that time, um, one being this first one. Um, so when we came to that conclusion, it was a sort of a no-brainer choice. We're just like, wow, we know that we've gotten good results in this area, like we just need to niche down. And, once we sort of started doing that, really showed in terms of the, the business revenue. So that's like essentially the first step. Now, what I also noticed was that when you do webinars, it's really quite, it's a lot easier to get more leads as well as make leverage sales um, or appointments or whatever the case may be. Because when you are using a webinar platform or a webinar selling platform, I should, I should say, you're essentially enable, you're enabling yourself to be in front of a massive audience and you're able to do the same sales pitch as you would as you as you would be able to on, on a one-to-one -one phone call or as you would in um, a one-to-one -one selling environment, but you're able to do it to many. Mm -hmm. And so what you can do if you have someone like Kim who knows really awesome marketing methods like the mogul method, um, you're able to get a butt ton of traffic to your registration pages. You're able to get a crap ton of leads. And then when you've got those leads, you're able to do really smart follow-up sequences like messenger bots or email sequences to get them back to the webinar to actually sell them one to many. And that's why webinars are such a powerful platform. Not only are you able to sell to a lot of people, you're able to like really take them through some pretty amazing experiences over an hour, two hours, something like one of my clients, I've been working on her webinar funnel all day. She's got a three hour webinar and she's in the, um, the relationship um, uh, advice space and she crushes it like three hours in a webinar. Most people will be like, wow, like no one's gonna sit on a webinar for three hours. But then you look at her, she converts like 10, 15, 20% of the people who register for the webinar and it's because of her methods. And I really think that that's why webinar platforms and selling via webinar platforms is one of the most, I'm not gonna say it's the most, but it's one of the most leverageable ways to make sales, especially online. You don't really have to leave your house, you don't have to go do events, you don't have to travel the world or the, the country or wherever you are. You can really just sit on your computer, you can refine your selling process, you can do it over and over again. It doesn't actually matter if people don't show up. You can just keep doing it. You're not actually really paying to do it. It's just cost of time. And once you've sort of mastered your skill set, that's when your sales and your revenue is going to reflect that in the webinar. That's epic. And what sort of businesses do you reckon are most suited for webinars? Because there's probably some people watching me like, 
or should I, like, maybe I am, like, you know, we've got Honolulu here. Should she do a webinar? Like, what types of people do you think or what types of businesses, categories should be using webinars? It's a great question. I, um, I really think that anyone who is in the digital space who has a solid core offer or something that is, I would say, of... 700 US dollars plus of an offering up to I would not really go above two and a half grand um, so you've got like the seven hundred dollar to two and a half thousand dollar range which is I would say the core um, of your value ladder and it has to sort of be a digital fulfillment um, sort of I guess coaching now it doesn't always have to be coaching digital fulfillment I think is just the main part um, whether it's uh, software, uh, whether it's um, coaching, whether it's a program, um, some sort of platform. It doesn't necessarily have to be coaching or teaching. I know there's a lot of course uh, coaches and consultants out there that are selling their webinars these days and it's become really popular to do so. But people like ClickFunnels sell via a webinar and they're, they are selling a training, but essentially the main thing they're selling is ClickFunnels. And you know, like my, my other business members, Pro, we're gonna be prepping to sell their webinars as well and it's a software it's not necessarily a, uh, a training um, people who shouldn't really be using webinars are uh, I would dare say people who are like in hands-on sort of works or like they have a business in landscaping and stuff like that you're probably not gonna find that your audience is gonna watch a webinar consume a webinar it also does really depend on what your audience does and doesn't do um, if, if you know that your audience is a hands-on sort of person, they're tradies or they, um, they work 10, 12 hour days, you should know that they're not gonna come home and sit on a computer and watch a two hour webinar that they've registered or they probably don't even have the time to sit down on the computer, to be honest. I remember like when I was in that environment, I didn't want, really wanna do that stuff. So you, you gotta look at where your audience is, what they do and um, how you can actually you know, get them there and engage them. Yeah. Another question for you is, what is the difference between, or how would you articulate the difference between an evergreen webinar and a live webinar? Because a lot of people throw this around as evergreen, and I don't know, they think that maybe it's like a license to print money, but like, how would you describe the difference between an evergreen and a normal webinar? That's another good question. So, in simple terms, a live webinar is something that's happening on a specific date. An evergreen webinar is something that you can continuously run and it's gonna you know, reset after it's run. Or um, A lot of people these days are doing 15 minute um, evergreen webinars, meaning every 15 minutes a new one's gonna start. Now, when you look at these as well, you have to look at your audience and go, okay, like, do these guys know it's directly me just doing a 15 minute thing video every 15 minutes? Are they gonna be okay with being on a, you know, an, a, a video that they know is a recorded sales machine and now I guess like for the internet marketing space everyone knows what a webinar is for other niches like my clients niche um, she's in the dating space so not everyone knows what a webinar is they're not they don't actually know what marketing is per se they just they just need the solution to their problem um, so it depends on your audience um, in terms of which method you use evergreen webinars do not usually perform as well as live webinars and it comes down to a few factors like um, live engagement, questions, Q&A, um, and uh, I guess a few other factors like like actual real stuff happening, um, real-time sales, um, you know, comments, attendees, you know, you can show a lot of these different things in the different webinar platforms. Um, so you have to really look at like the different things that you sort of can have and can't have in each side of the picture. Um, and I really do believe like in this day and age, you have to really test your webinar. Like a lot of people think that they'll be able to go ahead and record a sales video using Russell Brunson's perfect webinar script and just chuck it in an ever evergreen webinar funnel and start making monies in like a day using Kim's mogul method. Um, now that's great for getting leads, but like they're probably not going to make sales because they haven't actually gone through and refined their sales process using the webinar. Um, they really have to, it's like one of those things, man, you have to just like continue to refine your art and get better at selling via um, a live webinar and you know, seeing how people react to the stories that you're telling or seeing how people react to the offer. 
and seeing if people get excited or people, you know, jump off. Like even you can see live statistics in, in terms of where people are watching and not watching. You have to really like refine. And I think the best way to do that is just by doing live webinars again and again and again until you get something that works. And then you can look at making it evergreen. And then you can look at how you can set up an automation system to sell webinars like Sam Ovens or Dan Henry and making you know, millions of dollars a year just selling via webinar. Yeah. So true. And what would you, if you were to give people the top three platforms to go and look at and to utilize for their webinars, what would they be? So um, this is up to, I guess, the user experience. Like for me, um, I know that I have clients that use Zoom and they swear by Zoom. But then when I look at Zoom, I'm like, this is really basic. However, it doesn't stop them from making millions of dollars on live webinars. So Zoom, I would say, is a really fantastic live webinar platform. However, just know you can't do much segmenting. You can't do much like cool stuff on the back end, it's like saying that, you know, add someone to an email list if they didn't show up to the webinar. You can't even do that. Add someone to an email list if they did show up to the webinar. You can't do that. <laughs> so you add someone to an email list if they registered. Yep, that's all you can do. <laughs> so. That being said, all like a lot of big players still use Zoom for their live webinars and they still make sales. Like really you gotta look at like at the end of the day, do you want sales? Is that your goal? Do you want leads? Do you want segmented leads? It de really depends on what you wanna do. So Zoom's good for live. Webinar Jam is good for <laughs> the technical side. However, we have experienced a really big amount of bugs in the live side where you know the platform has crashed when people come to pitching their offer which essentially makes them lose sales um so web jam whilst it's a cool platform it's really nice to use has had some really heavy technical issues in terms of the live side and that's made me not really want to trust it after five or so uh all my clients who have had issues when it comes to them like running a live webinar mm. um However, that being said, EverWebinar, on the other hand, is a fantastic evergreen webinar platform. Mm -hmm. So that's WebJam and EverWebinar are the same platform, essentially the, the live side and the evergreen side. Um, so EverWebinar is really strongly um, recommended. And then my third one um, that I actually probably like the most is JetWebinar. Um, JetWebinar is probably more on the pricey side, and if you're lucky, you can get in on a lifetime deal like I did, but you probably will never because they're not going to do it again. Um, but they have some really good systems. It's really easy to set up. Um, they can do some cool fulfillment. And then they can also act as a Zoom-esque platform where you can do conferencing and you know um, live streams to Facebook. And then you can capture email addresses directly from Facebook, put them in lists and a lot of cool different stuff. So JetWebinar is really, um, a, a really quite a cool one as well. That's awesome. Chris, thank you so much for sharing all your webinar expertise with all the guys here today. As always, guys, you know what to do. Like if you like what Chris talked about or if you just like his beautiful smile. Give us a like. Give us a comment down below. Let us know what you thought or if you use a webinar platform. Tell us what you use and always subscribe. Make sure you get to see these videos first before anyone else. Until next time, guys, adios. It's Chris from the Funnel Division. There'll be a link for him down below as well if you want to find out more about him. Until then, adios. See you guys.